So, ready to fall in love with your life? Ready to live your best life possible? Ready to remember that anything is possible for you and that you deserve and are worthy of the greatest experiences you could ever think of? Then join me in this conversation with our next guest. Nicole Kendricks, thank you so much for being my first guest on my very first podcast. Um, It's kind of perfect because you pretty much inspired it. I've been wanting to do a podcast for quite some time, but I've just been busy watching you over the last decade, like so encouraging, so inspiring, just like this girl lives from her heart and to see where you are now and like what you're like what you've accomplished in terms of like personal life and like where you're living. I'm just I'm so excited to share your story and highlight it because I feel like this is what's possible when someone lives from their heart and like really opens up to life and what's possible for us, you know, so thank you so much for being here. Thank you for asking me. Yeah, like, I mean, I feel like you're the reason I am I I got on this topic, you know, like, just, like, to me, it's like, really, life is meant to be fun and joyous. And, you know, it's beautiful. And I just am so encouraged by, like, your sharing, like, and how you support people. So I don't even know where to start. But like, would you say that you're in love with your life? <laughs> Um, I would say I'm in love with my life. Yes. (laughs) And what what do you love most about your life? Honestly, it's all of the little things that added up to be big things. Mm -hmm. Like once I sort of got in the mindset of paying attention to all of the smaller things, it got a lot easier to believe in the bigger things, which then rotated into the idea of, holy crap, like this is a good life. Yes. You know, what I put get back and it just sort of comes out of nowhere. So yeah. yeah, I mean I don't even know how to answer that question besides just it just is. That's it's am- a mind programming. It is totally and I can I can totally attest to that and I this is kind of what I recorded my you know my first episode yesterday and it was just me sharing why I wanted to do this and what I wanted to highlight and it really is because I started realizing what it means to create my life and it, it it's about like loving what is already right here in front of me like you said like right. noticing those little things and so like how so it is like a mindset very much like what you choose to focus on and like how you approach your life so and I think that's hard for some people so would you say you've always been kind of more optimistic and like looked at things on the bright side or like chose to notice these small things or was it something that you had to kind of develop or practice you know I think it's both Mm -hmm. um because as a kid um even though I didn't like as a child like single mom syndrome like you like my mom did everything she could. Like mm-hmm. I was, you know, raised with that idea that I could do anything, mm-hmm. which sometimes gets you in trouble when you get to a certain age sure. because like everyone else is saying, "No, you can't." Yeah, and then sort of like rebalance like where you're at. Yeah. Um, I really think that as a child, I, I mean, I don't, I'm never gonna say the quote right, but it's like, um, uh, could you go back to like who you were before the like the world told you who you couldn't be? Right. Do you know what I mean? stuff like that. I can't remember exactly how to say it, but it, I always think about that because it's like, um, and me and my wife talk about this all the time. Like at what age do we stop believing Yes. that we were enough? Yeah. And that in turn flips around to like how you relate to others, how you accept blessings, like mm-hmm. how you see gratitude. Um, what is a good life? Yeah. Like I don't, have a, I don't have a fucking million dollars and I don't have like this, this and that. So I don't have a good life. Like, when does that start? Yeah. So me, the downward push into my self or lack of self-worth um, really started at like 18, 19, mm-hmm. like right up high school. I felt pretty good in high school, had some self-esteem issues, you know, hello puberties. Yeah. But, um, but it really went downhill. And then when I found my niche of girls who I decided not to compete with, but to inspire each other, which was, you know, my groups and stuff like that with my sobriety, Mm -hmm. I realized, like, holy crap, I can reclaim those innocent, beautiful, you know, feelings about the world and about myself. 
So it's a mixture of all of that. Yeah. It's like, yes, child, middle age, surprise, surprise. I got beaten down by my own ideas of what society wanted of me and what I was good. And then, you know, 30 hit, bless 30. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I was like, holy crap, I can actually go back to like dig in what's happening with my life. Yeah. So long answer, but balance middle grounds pretty much. That's like, a, yeah. That's amazing because I, I feel like I came to that realization this summer of like that reclaiming my innocence because I have been walking a very long process of over a decade of self-forgiveness where I was really in this introspective kind of like um, uh, purgatory or like I, I was I was putting myself through a process of purification because I believed that at my core there was something wrong with me. And, yeah. and it had to do with I had low self-esteem. I was so insecure. I, I didn't think I was worthy or deserving. And I had to prove that I was worthy and deserving. So I did my self-forgiveness, you know, and I would and I walked this process and it got me to a point of realizing I was born innocent and I came yeah. into this world innocent and I don't need forgiveness because I was innocent. And I was like, ah, it was like the heavens <laughs> opened in terms of realizing I'm just came full circle and it was what I needed obviously like I needed to walk this rigorous process to like realize that yeah I was born innocent and I was born perfect and like it was it, it was I can totally relate to that point of realizing like I deserve the abundance and the vibrancy and the well-being that is all around me in this natural world like you know earth is this magnificent example of expression of life and I'm like that's me too like I deserve that equally and so realizing that I just have to allow myself to trust that I deserve that I'm worthy of that that's actually who I am it was really groundbreaking for me to, you know yeah. to like come to yeah. that realization so yeah it helps you with a lighter absolutely absolutely and it realized and also having my son it, it was that point of realizing I just, you can just see how children are. They're so light. They're so free. They're so inquisitive. Yeah. They're so explorative. And I'm like, wait a minute. Isn't, if that's how we're born naturally, right. and that's how we like are expressing ourselves naturally. I'm like, isn't that then what the expression of life is? So it's like, yeah. why are we not like that? <laughs> right. Well, it's that whole, like, I mean, you could talk for hours, but the nature versus nurture. Yes. Like what they're not out once they're away from you in their constant love and reassurement, like reassurance of like what you can do, what you're capable of yeah. and the world tells you otherwise. Yeah. Like how do you combat that? But like sort of what you said though, as well, I honestly, I remember about five years ago getting to a point where um, it is like, you know, five years of constant meditation and working with a sponsor and like, you know, basically free therapy. Yeah. Um, but like the idea that like you get to choose now mm -hmm. um someone said something to me that pissed me off of course because it was the truth because that stuff pisses me off a lot when you're in the wrong mindset was just like mm, you're an adult now yeah you have no one to blame yeah you either get to work through your shit or sit in it yeah and i hated it because i was like but this is where i feel comfortable I feel comfortable blaming other people for my shit. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, you've known s some of my story and I've told it to many of rooms of people, but like a lot of bad things have happened to me. And mm -hmm. I will acknowledge that things have happened to me. Mm -hmm. But now my reactionary time is, what do I do with it? Yeah. Because I could validly to the outside world tell my story and have a reason to be an asshole. Yeah. To have a reason to hate myself and live in a gutter. Yeah. But no thank you i'd rather be tan in the, <laughs> in the end of december uh hawaii with the gifts that have been given to me mm -hmm. literally handed and all we had to do is being like okay i'll take it even if i'm not ready yeah seriously that's amazing. like it, it working through it like literally like like you said, it's just like you wake up one day and it just comes to you and you're like, wow. Yeah. 
it's a choice. <laughs> yeah. And it's amazing because it's, it's such a cool example of when you decide to take responsibility for everything and, 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 and not necessarily like what happened to you. Like, you know, I'm big right. on like, you know, we are creators of our reality. Like that is mm-hmm. clear for me. But obviously not to say that you would deliberately choose bad things to happen to you, but it's that, like you said, that point of taking responsibility of who am I in relation to this? How am I right. going to respond? You know? And so, yeah, it was same for me of like realizing and taking responsibility for my life. It's like, oh, wow, I have complete choice and creative control here of what mm-hmm. I actually want to create as my life. And there's no one to blame. There's no chance. There is only trust that if I'm open with an open heart and I have love for myself and other people, then th- there's only well-being in the universe. Like, that's what I realized was like, look at nature. Everything's provided for it. It has everything it needs. And so if we just open ourselves up, there that's available to us as well, you know? But it is like... It's available. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you have to like... Well, how would you describe that? Well, I guess it's like you said, it's just that point of, you know, it seems that we have to walk or we have or people do walk through some some troubling times to get to a point of realizing, you know, who we really are, you know? Mm-hmm. So do you want to talk? I mean, do you want to talk a little bit about your getting sober? And like, obviously, that was a big thing for you, um, right. like well, a turning I mean- point, but... Right. Well, I mean, literally, I woke up at when I was 30, um, not intending to be sober. Um, and I had, you know, literally all my hidden booze I had drank the night before. I had been blackout. And I woke up sober, like literally clear headed. Mm. And that was not me. That mm. was not me. Mm. That was not my intent. That was not my life goal. I had no goals. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it was a visual moment of like literally i don't even know if you were you've been to my old house before a long time ago i think but like i was in the basement and the light was coming through the window and i had woken up and i was like well now that i have a choice and i don't know where it came from and it was before it was before my relapse so i had this enlightenment i got frightened from that light because at the time it does feel like a lot of work Mm -hmm. it's a lot of recognition of fault Mm -hmm. and once again i always want to repeat in things especially when they're being recorded (laughs) but I repeat things that like this does not give permission to the people who did bodily harm to me and hurt me this does not give permission to the people who have bodily harmed and hurt other people what it does is when you take the time to go through your shit you actually get that power back Mm -hmm. and you get to decide how that's going to help you in your future what you're going to honestly emotionally and purely manifest into your life Mm -hmm. because manifestation has brought blessings into my life but my hatred for myself back then brought a whole bunch of other stuff yes because the universe is listening no matter what exactly (laughs) and that's how and that's how free we are is that we choose what we're creating and if we are victimizing ourselves to a, a life that happens by chance then we don't really know what we're going to get. But right. if we take responsibility and are more empowered to realize the power we have, then right. it's in our hands, you know? Right. Yeah. And the ability to say, like, I'm sorry to people. Yeah. That's also t- our back, too. Totally. It's all my biggest amends to people. I mean, I've done a lot of amends, but my biggest amends is just to look at you and say, hey, girl, Sorry, I fucked up at work that night when I was wasted trying to get back to my car to drive home drunk Mm -hmm. and just be like, my living amends to everyone that I ever heard is to remain sober and become a better me. And that also translates to the universe. I'm ready. Yeah. Because like I was even talking to my dad earlier today, which I did not do when I was drinking. Yeah. Um, And just sort of talking about like he said to me, thank God you didn't move to Hawaii when you were drinking. Mm -hmm. You know, like the blessings I got now would not have been blessings. They would have been curses. I would have been further away from people who are holding me accountable. Yeah. I wouldn't have appreciated anything that I have right now. Mm -hmm. Between my little fur baby doggy that you just saw 
you know, our house in Hawaii, a relationship I can count on, Mm -hmm. you know, like a job I love, Mm -hmm. like this stuff would not have been brought to me and I wouldn't have cared if it did. Yeah. I would have messed it up. Mm -hmm. So like literally the short, short scheme of my story is 15 years of sadness, 15 years of not paying attention to anything, Mm -hmm. 15 years of like literal death. I have died. Like, I don't remember half of that time. Wow. Like, blatantly blacked out for, like, seven years of my life in total is what I've sort of averaged. Like, half of it, I don't remember. Um, so the universe wasn't done with me. Mm-hmm. The universe was like, girl, you ain't a cat. You ain't got more lives. <laughs> I gave you three to blast away. Now choice. Yeah. And... So the visual blessings and things that are handed to me, I've realized that are they're every day. And I know you notice them because I see you and I see your little face and I see your smile and I see like the gratitude in you. And -hmm. it's just like amazing. So as nervous as I was to do this, I was like, if I'm going to do this, I'm doing it with my girl. Yeah. So like the fact that we get to do this. Yeah, I know. know? Oh yeah. This to me is like such a, a alignment point because I mean, literally as soon as we got on here, my, I've had just waves of chills throughout my body, which is like a big point of confirmation for me that like, yeah. there's something very special here. This is a co-creative like endeavor. The fact that we're able to come together and sit in this vibe together and like share yeah. our story and our love and like, and really for me, my, my biggest like passion is to like help people to realize how empowered they are. And I want to inspire and encourage people to realize that they can overcome anything. And I, you know, am like, I overcame a cigarette addiction, which, you know, part of me is like, whatever, you know, when it's, when I'm sitting next to someone who, you know, had a, like, that's the thing. Like, I didn't need a lot of bad consequences to wake me up. I, which bled. I know. (laughs) How lucky I am because I did some dumb shit. I've done some dumb stuff that never went worst case scenario when it could have easily. And I think, you know, I don't know. Part of me is just like, I I am so lucky, but I'm also like, you know, there's people like you who have really gone through, through it and to come out the other side is like, these are the, these are the bright lights of this world that I want to highlight and showcase and show like, Look at what people have gone through and have come out of. And there's no reason we can't pick ourselves up, you know, and really make the best of this life, you know. And so it's like I'm so encouraged and inspired to see you and your story. And I'm like, and I haven't talked to you in like, you know, besides the, you know, likes and comments on Facebook and stuff. But I haven't like (laughs) had a conversation with you. So it's like the fact that you're talking manifestations and creating life and blessings and gratitude. I'm like, holy alignment, you know, like we're on the same vocabulary wavelength, you know? So, so it's just like, these things are so cool because it's like, everything is so specific, you know, and it's like fun to be able to come together and realize, oh, wow, look at, you know, what's happening in the world. These people, there's people in this world that are, are taking life into their own hands. And like you said, I think, the biggest blessing that we can be for this world is to live our utmost potential to be the living example of showing like what's actually possible you know right so yeah we do have a purpose we do have a a reason for being and uh, why our story didn't end the way that it did you know is because this is this is the best life possible like this is our opportunity to create the best life possible you know yeah and i'm like so excited (laughs) i know and well, I feel I feel the same way too because I've worked with a lot of girls and a lot of groups and a lot of different backgrounds and a lot of stories, which all just sort of are the same lineup. Though it's you know, it was pretty cool. Then it got worse. Then it got really worse. Then I was like, ugh. Then I got sick of tired, sick and tired of being sick and tired. Mm-hmm. Then I found a way, and experience, strength, and hope is literally what I'm here for. Mm-hmm. Like I know that. Mm -hmm. I know that like from my innermost soul, I know that I'm supposed to show people that like you can literally sleep in a gutter and um, evaporate from the world and want to die and die and do horrible things to yourself because you hate your flesh. Yeah. And 
they'll come out the other end Mm -hmm. and wake up in your dream because you get to live the life you are in now and still have aspirations for something else. Yeah. And I think that like I was, I was living in the aspiration, not in the self. Mm-hmm. Like I was, I was thinking about what I wanted and how I wanted to live and what would make me happy. And it was such a waste of time because it, if you're not happy with anything you have now, realistically, because you can sit there in a bad mind state and be like, I hate everything. Everything's stupid. I don't have this. I don't have that. But like, when I talk to like my girls, I go like, okay, so if you're in like a panic attack about how horrible things are going, put your hands on the table, put your hands together, mm-hmm. touch something in the present, Yeah. touch something, inhale, breathe, because we go so far outside ourselves for happiness mm-hmm. that we forget that literally being able to sit anywhere is a good day Mm -hmm. like there was this old dude in one of my meetings a long time ago in my home group and i'd be like what's up ed how you doing today he's like every day above ground girl and he would just laugh (laughs) and like bless you because that is what it is Mm -hmm. every day is a chance as sappy and annoying as it sounds to people when they're in a bad space because i've been there Mm -hmm. every day is a chance every day you get to be like so yesterday sucked. Mm-hmm. Today, what am I going to do about it? Yeah. And my easiest way is honestly to get out of myself. Mm-hmm. Because my brain still naturally wants to be in a bad mood. Yeah, It's easier. It's comfortable. Mm-hmm. There's always the joke that if you see me talking to myself in public, I'm having a staff meeting. <laughs> because I will literally be like, girl, shut up. How dare you say that to your because if you keep the conversation in your head quiet, it will go negative. Yeah. I have never that doesn't happen to you. Mm-hmm. But if you if I look at myself and say, Nicole, you're ugly, fat, horrible, and no one wants you out loud, that's not true. Yeah. Like it sounds more silly. Yeah. It's amazing the chances. You just have to have a little tiny spark. And all I had was a tiny spark. It was the end of magically the universe was like one more just give it one more Mm -hmm. and so that's why i just say every time i wake up i lay in bed before i pee and i just go i'm here what am i gonna do today yeah even just i get to watch netflix you know what i mean like anything totally yeah every i I see that that way too is like every i mean the fact that we're still breathing is an opportunity you know and i just think you know i grew up with you know, um, spiritual understanding and like the other side and ghosts and heaven and stuff like that. And, you know, even this process I walked for the last 12 years with this group of people, there was definitely a connection to the other side. And so what I understand and kept hearing was that if you're gone, this is the place to be actually. This is where life is actually happening and expanding and evolving and changing and growing. And it's like, this is where you want to be. When you die, when you like cross over, whatever, you maybe have access to a broader perspective of what's really going on here and who we are in the grand scheme of things. But the desire to be back here is present. So it's like, yeah, it's totally like if we're alive and breathing, this is this is where life is. This is where life's happening. This is the leading edge. I understand it as like the leading edge, you know, and Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, and I like that point about um, we in, the search for ourselves outside of ourselves is where I think we go uh, we go astray is because you know we're looking for something to fill this void inside of ourselves so it's smoking or drinking or you know we ha- we are there's this void inside of us that we think that we're not worthy we're not loved we're nothing we're we're useless and so we're looking for something to fill that or to distract us from it. And yep. for me, too, it was a point of realizing also this summer. This summer was a big kind of, uh, you know, awakening for me. And it was like this realization of like, even in my understanding that I'm responsible for my life and my thoughts and my words and my deeds and all these things, I was still looking very much externally for something, you know. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden I was like, I have to go within. Mm-hmm. And like, even though I have been busy, you know, kind of with my self-forgiveness, 
you know, taking account of who I've been and who I am and, you know, righting my wrongs, I still was very much focused externally. So I started meditating. I started doing like kundalini yoga, just like really connecting with my body. And it was like, that's when the floodgates really opened for me because I realized, oh my God, here is the love. Here is the innocence. Here is the wholeness. Here is that spring uh, that well that is constantly flowing my cup is overflowing you know like I'm fulfilled inside myself like my source of life exists within me and it was like oh my god what have I been doing you know and um yeah yeah, so so that's that's an awesome point like it is I feel like that point of falling in love with your life is realizing you don't need anything outside of yourself to a degree everything you need is already within you you know yes and um yeah that was a big catalyst for me in terms of realization of like practically actually living that realization of like wow everything's in me like and so from there is when I started being able to see what my reality actually is as a reflection of me you know and that's the purest way to do it and that's the problem is that we always look at ourselves through other people's glasses and we think like what are they seeing and in the real grand scheme of things who the fuck cares yes i mean one of the best things someone told me in group once was like no one thinks about you as much as you think about yourself yeah no one gives a fuck like literally no and if (laughs) they do they're paying way too much attention yes and they're not focusing on theirs yeah that's literally what it is Mm -hmm. like it does not matter yeah um and I get that. I remember one of the feelings I've had like waves of that feeling you were talking about, where you're just like, holy crap, there it is. Like, it's just like, like I've literally been in situations where like goose, like goose pimples happen and goosebumps. And I'm just like, oh my God, it's happening. Like, hold on to this moment, hold on to this moment because there are waves of it. And I always do the example where it's like, you know, someone can give you like a hundred compliments in a day. And then one person asks you to work on something, not even that it's bad, just to work on it. And all of a sudden you're a piece of shit. Mm -hmm. What happened to a whole list of things that you're amazing at? Mm -hmm. Like what happened to that? So literally I sit in the little tiny waves of good and try to hold on to them because Mm -hmm. there's always going to be moments where you feel a little bit iffy. Mm -hmm. There's moments where you're not feeling a hundred percent. And if you hold on to that and bottle that feeling of purity Mm -hmm. like that pure joy of something that Mm -hmm. pure innocence that pure just like thank gosh Mm -hmm. feeling Mm -hmm. and then sort of like sprinkle it out on those bad moments it's a lot less Mm -hmm. but it's so easy to forget those times totally it's active you have to work at it and I think that's what the problem is that when I was feeling bad about myself every day it honestly as much as I pretended it wasn't work because it was just something I felt I was in it. Mm-hmm. I was, oh, this is just who I am. But it took more work to do that than it does this. Mm-hmm. It takes a lot less work to wake up grateful mm-hmm. for anything. I mean, one of the most common exercises with sponsees and sponsors is like, I need you to text me or call me and five things you're grateful for every day for seven days. Mm. Sometimes it's longer, depending on where you're at. But like, literally... It's like five things. And it could be like this last cookie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But like anything. Yeah. Because it's so easy to get caught up on the big things that have mm-hmm. to happen, yeah. have to happen. Yes. Years. Yeah. But what about the little things? Totally. I did. I did recently a whole like attitude of gratitude. Like, you know, I did a seven day thing on Facebook, but I had started it for myself. Like, I don't know what I saw just in passing of like the power of gratitude. And I was like, let me focus in on that because I also saw myself, you know, dabbling into this whole like getting directive with my manifestation and stuff like that. It is like you can think that you need something big to happen you need a big something to happen and come to you to show you that this is what you're doing and this is what you're worthy of and it's like that's backwards actually it's it's about realizing what's already here and so I started practicing that you know every day writing you know pages of what I was uh, grateful for and it's like 
for my relationship, for my son, for my house. I'm grateful for the beautiful view I have outside my window. I live in such a beautiful place. I'm grateful for the smell of salt water in the air. I'm grateful for the sun. You know, it's like little things, but it's like it adds up. And it does. And it is also, I think, I think that point about um, it's easier to be joyful than to sit in a shitty situation or experience. I think it's it's hard to be in that because it's change and change is what is hard because it's like we create habits and then mm-hmm. to change that habit is the work, you know? And so it's like if you can just work a little bit at changing your attitude and what you're focusing on, once you get to that, that's then your baseline. That then is the default, you know? But it's like you have to reprogram yourself in a way to start noticing these other things of like, I mean, what is it that you really want your life to be? Because your focus is determining what it is, you know? So what are you focusing on? So will you tell me um, your process of, like, how Hawaii came about for you? Like, <laughs> just because I feel like it's going to be a magical story. Well, I mean, it's it's surprisingly simple. Mm-hmm. Um, first of all, I never thought I'd go anywhere. I was okay. Minnesota. Yeah, okay. 100%. First of all, let's just tell people. So you're from... Where I'm from, Minnesota. which is Minnesota, so Midwest, yeah. super cold, like, and it's like, yes, proud, heard. proud Minnesotan too, right? We're proud in Minneapolis to be where yeah. we're from. <laughs> no, it's kind of winter girl, uh, and you know there was no, there's nothing wrong. I I love my people. People mm-hmm. have been asking me, to "Miss Minnesota," I said, "No, I miss my people because mm-hmm. I have 40 years of you know bonding." Yeah. Um, but so I met a beautiful human and we're together and we started dating and we started going on trips together because she likes it and I've never been anywhere I was like cool let's go um and it was a healthy relationship where we could do 50 50 cost so I was like cool I can actually afford it and we were just traveling and we decided you know let's get married okay cool we got married love it I'm with someone I can respond to they respond to me you know Mitch is like the best best female I've ever met in my entire life, best human. And so we had this amazing connection and she was like, what do you want to do for a honeymoon? And I was like, are we going to go on a honeymoon? Like it wasn't even an option in my head. I was like, we already travel. That's, that's cool. Like, it's not like all the time travel, but we've been places. Mm -hmm. And, um, and she's like, how do you feel about Hawaii? And I was like, never thought about it. Let's go. So we go to Hawaii on our honeymoon as literally like we're landing uh, my wife isn't feeling very good. Allergies. We land. We get out of the plane. She inhales. Her allergies are gone. Like, because it's open air airport. Like, you mm-hmm. land. You walk the car mat. Like, it's like a fucking movie. It's great. Yeah. You don't get, like, days or anything. But, you know, it's the thing. Yeah. So, we spend our honeymoon here. And we both start getting emotional about leaving. Mm. But neither of us really want to say anything. You know, like, you want to go home, but, like, it's like, but this feels so great here. But maybe because it's just our honeymoon. Mm -hmm. Um, But it ends up it wasn't just our honeymoon. It's the environment. Mm -hmm. We have technically the cleanest air in the world. Um, Literally just the, like, pheromones of the air make you feel healthier. Mm -hmm. So we get back. And, like, most people who come back from Hawaii, honestly, you're like, oh, my God, I need to move to Hawaii. And so everyone's like not taking us seriously. <laughs> and we're like, no, but really. <laughs> so we plan a couple more trips. You know, COVID starts to hit. Because, I mean, this was only two years ago. Mm. Like our honeymoon two oh, years ago. Really? Yeah. yeah. And so my beautiful human of a wifey poo um, is a military girl. Mm. Um, she retires. She w- retired after 21 years of service. Wow. She just turned 40, by the way, so she's a baby. Yeah. Um, but she had already been working a civilian status as well for a government job. So we start looking into ways to get here. We're like, let's do a five-year plan. We start organizing our pets. Like, what do we need to do for pets? How are we going to deal with selling the house? Like, where so, are we? So yes. let me just interrupt you. So the plan yeah. was we're moving to Hawaii. We yeah. don't really know what that looks like or how that's going to yeah. play out, but we're open no. that this is going to happen. This is where we want yes. to be. And so then you yeah. look at just like the little logistics that would have to happen yeah. anyway. Okay. To get there anyway. Yeah. So okay. we get a list. We just sort of think, okay, so like what do we need to get done for this to happen? Mm-hmm. How much do things cost? Real talk. 
where would we want to live? So let's, let's make another trip. Let's just do a quick trip there. Quick trip, whatever. Um, and just start looking at actual neighborhoods. Start stocking Trulia houses. You know, all the cute things, like the, you know, sort of organizing. Mm-hmm. Um, so my wife starts, like, I was going to come here first, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, because, like, I'm a server. I could find a job. Um, but then COVID. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. my whole industry shuts down. Right. So Mitch steps up and she starts looking at government jobs. Because you can lateral move. You don't lose pay, basically. You just move to a different position in a different state. Mm. So she starts doing Zoom interviews, which is very stressful for her, but she feels the calling as well. So we are here on our last trip, got backed up like three times. Um, We were arriving on a, what was it? On a Monday. My wife had an interview with the USDA Mm. that Friday before. So we had already done, like I said, we have started doing the cats, doing things. Because, by the way, for anyone interested in traveling to Hawaii, if you have pets, it's a year-long process. Like, oh. you have to get shots, rabies. There's no rabies on this island. Yeah. So, like, they're very specific. There's a lot of things. There's a lot of there's a good amount of money on that side to mm-hmm. take care of them. Yeah. Want to bring them. Yeah. So, she has an interview on a Friday. She's like, oh, it was okay. Like, I don't know. You know, self-doubt. But, like, it's still going to happen no matter what. Something's going to happen. We get off the plane, Christina. Mm-hmm. On a Monday after that Friday, to her getting an email saying, we'd like you to join our team. We know you're on the island. Do you want to come see your office? Wow. It is not the longest story because we had five years. We want we had five years mm-hmm. <laughs> in our head. Yeah. Because have you heard that joke that if you ever want God to laugh or the goddess to laugh, tell them your plans? Yeah, <laughs> totally. Like you're when you start manifesting and yeah. it's meant to be. That's amazing. So, yeah. So, so how long... So how long was the, yeah, from honeymoon to the time you guys got that email? Like a year and a half. That's amazing. Like not even like, yeah. So then she literally got the job um, at the begin like at that trip. And that was November or December. I can't remember now. She moved here the this last February. I got her ass packed up <laughs> and sent her Valentine's Day weekend of this year. So last winter she got the job she moved here in February of this year has she been there the whole time yes oh I didn't know that yes so you guys are doing so, long distance yes so I went there for my 40th birthday in April yeah so I got like a break to come see her yeah but otherwise we were separated she was taking care of our life here she was yeah. getting I mean her job started she was organizing she was renting from our realtor she was getting everything started and I was in St. Paul doing all the construction yeah and selling house and getting stuff ready here and getting the cats ready and stuff like that so like our partnership is magical in the matter of she is very technical mm-hmm. he can like do everything on the internet like get all the paperwork all blah i can like i do the action part where i'm bringing the cats to the vet and blah 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 yeah so it's boring probably for the rest of the people listen to that but she moved here in february i came and visited her in april we looked at some stuff looked at the houses the house market was just about to pop up hard i came back to minnesota or went back to minnesota we're doing house tours with me on the phone yeah in person we found our house on a day when she went to go look at another house it was the realtor said i have another house down the street it's not done yet do you want to go look at it and we said yes. <laughs> and now we have a three bedroom, two bath house. Wow. And we didn't have to fight for it. That's amazing. Um, and I moved here August 3rd. She came back to Minnesota and came back with me. We had two cats on carry on. <laughs> That's incredible. And literally as of August 3rd, I'm here. And um, since we are recording, I wanted to say something. So because I've told a couple people this and it really like, I'm going to get emotional about it. Okay. Yeah, so emotional. Uh, I'm a Brown girl from Minnesota. Oh yeah. I didn't know and what you were going to say. <laughs> I love my family and I love my chosen family. Yeah. And the, I've been here since August. So August 3rd, August, September, October, November, December. So four and a half months. Mm-hmm. This is the only time in my 40 years on this planet that I have gone without someone asking me what I am or where I'm from. Mm. My perfect breed of facial features, everyone thinks I live here. 
<laughs> I was just as I'm looking at you, I'm like, she's Hawaiian, <laughs> clearly. I literally, literally, people have been like, you look more Hawaiian than Hawaiians. Yeah. But I have did not realize yeah. what that did to me. Yeah. Asked on a daily basis, basically, no exaggeration, what I am or where I'm from, mm-hmm. and the freedom from the first time I landed in this place. No one looks at me when I hold my wife's hand. Mm -hmm. No one asks me where I am or what I am. The only time it ever slips out, someone asks me, one person asked me because I said something like literally like hot dish or oofda. Like (laughs) like, it was super generic. Yeah. Um, But like I literally get emotional about it like all the time. That's incredible. I I mean, I can imagine that's like just like feeling at home, like feeling like you're not standing out like, you know, as like something different, but you're like exactly where you're supposed to be, you know? That's amazing. It's a magical place. And besides that general honest freedom, Mm -hmm. like the environment that I have moved to, that the universe allowed us to move to so freely, Mm -hmm. honestly, like literally, like I could go into more detail about our story, but like everything was literally like our... I don't care if you're ready. Yeah. If you want here, yeah. say yeah. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I'm here. Like we went to a restaurant named Pineapples and we went there to eat one night and I was like, this shit is bomb. <laughs> it's an open restaurant. Everyone's helping each other. These people are running around in circles at full speed with smiles on their faces under their masks. But you know, yeah. you can tell. Yeah. In honor, I wasn't planning on working until after January mm. of this like, and I just, I was like, honey, I'll meet you up front. And she goes up front and I walked to the house desk and I just said, I said, on my way up to it, I literally did a little prayer. I was like, manifest. I know you want to work here, but it's not your time. If it's not your time. I walked up, I said, are you hiring? I didn't know the owner was at the host desk. Oh. And she said, yeah, literally screenshot my resume, sent it to her that Saturday. I had an interview Tuesday where I was already on the schedule. That's amazing. So like, this is not me. This is not my whole aspect of things is not for this stuff to happen. Yeah. But my gratitude for life, Mm -hmm. I like humble aspect of being like, if it's not, if it's not for me, just because I want it, I understand why I'm not going to get it. And that's hard Mm -hmm. because if I want it, I want it. (laughs) I have to change it to if it's meant for me. Mm -hmm. And every day I get to wake up and be like, fuck where am I? <laughs> yeah. Like, and who do you have working for you? <laughs> I know. I, yeah, like, like how many angels are around me? Like appreciate you. High five. <laughs> it's that's amazing because it just goes to show you like that the ease and effortlessness that is available in our lives. Like it doesn't have to be a fight. It doesn't have to be a stripe. It doesn't have to be effort. It can be easy. Yeah, like, well, you, have, you have to do and, some things and the actions, yeah. but, like, it can be inspired and it can be fun. It can be joyful, you know? Yeah. That's incredible. You just have to start the pace and realize that, like, like we have what we need. Yeah. On, on a most, on a general aspect base, we have what we need. The rest is icing. Yeah. And... I don't need a lot. And like generically what I really found out too, like just shipping shit from one state across an ocean, Mm -hmm. you don't 95% of the stuff you have. Totally. It's just storage. Yeah. Literally you get it here and you're like, now I have to donate. Mm -hmm. Like bless the girls I work with. We're doing clothing swaps where I don't take anything back. I just, (laughs) you know, like just, it's amazing. We don't need what the world tells us we need. Yeah. Totally. And it gets lonely when you don't have things and you realize you don't need them. And you're like, yeah. I could have been okay this whole time, but I needed to also go through some things because I would not be me. Yeah. If I had gone through the horrors that I had been through. Yeah. And I like me. <laughs> hmm. I'm just interjecting here because as this is my first podcast, we are still learning our system. And so a little bit of technical difficulties, I did not record a good chunk of the conversation here. So the next part you're going to hear is 
Nicole going into her experience um, as a sponsor in AA. She did get sober over 10 years ago from drinking alcohol, and she is an amazing sponsor with tons of wisdom. And so we're just diving into that conversation now in terms of her role as a sponsor, how she um, approaches her sponsees in terms of people who are looking to change their life, essentially. So enjoy. You know, like people come to me because they know that I'm sober and I'm, you know, it is an anonymity, it is a spiritual watchword. Like a lot of my programmers don't promote that and it's a choice. Now I am, I try to be some sort of a beacon about it. So like, I'm not going to force someone, I'm not going to put it upon them. I'm not going to tell you you have a problem. That's not my job. Mm -hmm. But my job is that if you feel you do have an issue, I am available because you know I'm here. Mm -hmm. And that's just a life thing. That's not just sobriety. Mm -hmm. Because yes, my life is better because I'm sober, but that's because alcohol was killing me mm -hmm. and I was letting it. Mm -hmm. But people can have, I mean, like, I really don't like, like, I understand like people think, okay, so like, yeah, Nicole, like you've died, you've done this, you've done this, like, but you, you got through all that shit. But I'm like, but like, you know, your cigarette addiction, Christina, that's important. Mm -hmm. You know, I work with people like, this girl comes to meeting, came to meeting a long time ago, and she's like, I just don't know if I'm supposed to be here. And I said, well, why are you here? And she goes, well, I tried not to drink this week, and I had panic attacks every night. And mm -hmm. I said, well, how much are you drinking? A bottle of wine. That's not what you guys do. I listen to your stories, and it's not as bad. Mm -hmm. Being a functional alcoholic is almost worse in my experience yeah. than being an alley dweller. Mm -hmm. Like... Because you can get away with it and it's encouraged in society to keep yourself depressed. Yeah. So what I do is I just say, give it a chance. And literally, like, how many years of your life have you spent feeling awful? Can you try a week? Can you try showing up for yourself for a week? And then either they come back and they continue and we go try another week. Try another week. And just see if you can even trick yourself into a positive mindset because repetitive behavior like we talked about at the beginning when you're a kid you're innocent you're pure you're having fun you're eating dirt you're playing you're just like i can be a doctor mm -hmm. you know like i could do anything yeah. and when does that change so like it took how many years to get in a funk yeah the problem is we want what we want when we want it and we're not willing to work for what we deserve for what is waiting for us mm -hmm. so i just say Give it a try. Mm -hmm. Give it a try. Call me every day. Tell me something you're grateful for. Try to focus on that. See how it changes your life. Mm -hmm. And it is freaking crazy how those little tiny changes mm -hmm. and actions change your mindset. And it's scary. Mm -hmm. And I want to put it out there for anyone who's actually listening. Like, it is scary to feel happy when you've spent so many years feeling comfortable in the dirt. Mm -hmm. it is scary to see that light and it's scary to believe you deserve it. And I will tell people like when I work with girls, I'm like, I'm going to tell you uncomfortable things like you're worth it. <laughs> <laughs> like you're beautiful. Yeah. Like you're talented. Like let's snuggle and talk about things. Like I will tell you that you're worthy of this world mm -hmm. until you believe it yourself. Mm -hmm. Just give it a week. So it's terrifying. Mm -hmm. But I spent 17 years terrified of my fucking shadow. So why not work yeah. on something? Yeah, that ties into what I wanted to say earlier, which was that point of owning up to your mistakes. It's the same mm -hmm. thing. If you can face these things about yourself that you think are so terrifying and that you judge so harshly and that you mm -hmm. think that you should hide from, if you can face those in yourself, mm -hmm. by yourself, like the way I did that was with writing. I would write out the worst things I had in my head, I would write it out so I could see it. And all of a sudden it didn't have the same power. It, right. it lost its oomph, you know? And mm -hmm. the more that I could take ownership for myself and yep. then the more I could take ownership for things in my life, like at work, making a mistake and owning up, like I made that mistake. It's okay. Yeah. Like that was definitely an empowering thing to do for myself because it's like, if I know that it's okay that I made a mistake, then I don't care what anyone else is going to think about it, you know, because I, I say it's okay that I made a mistake. I say it's okay that 
that is who I was in the past, but I don't have to be that anyway. I'm the one that says that I'm redeemable and I right. deserve a second chance and I deserve right. everything I've ever wanted. Mm-hmm. You know, right. It's like, and the universe is waiting for you to believe it. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because what is, I mean, life in the universe is basically responding to us. Like we, th- it's like life gave us life and you do with it what you will. And I'm here yep. to support you unconditionally. So yep. if you choose to not live your utmost potential, but you want to go explore these other aspects of life, you're free mm-hmm. to do that. But right. I'll be here when right. you want to experience who you really are, which is that point of your utmost potential is love and yeah. abundance and well-being and thriving and joy and happiness. And, you know, mm-hmm. yeah. It's more natural to have those things in your life than not. Yeah. It's just that we're taught and choose to believe otherwise. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So it's so simple. <laughs> that is really yeah. the essence and of it's it. It's so simple, it's hard. It's, it is. We like to complicate everything. Totally. Complicating is like natural yeah. for most humans. Yeah. But really, it's like if it's too simple, it must be wrong. And yeah. it's like, no, if it's too simple, it's probably right. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, totally. Uh, the complication comes when we we overthink, and that's when we're getting in the way of just like yep. being be in the moment, you know. Find the joy in the moment, you know. Mm-hmm. And I feel like kids are such a good example of how we can, you know, approach our lives with just openness mm-hmm. and curiosity and follow your joy. Like, what makes yep. you feel good and feel excited, and what do you want to explore? Go do that. This has been an amazing conversation. I just want to end with like one last like practical, what is a practical thing that you do on a daily basis to kind of keep you in this state and presence? Like what do you do to support yourself? Support myself. Um, I definitely take moments through the day. Um, a lot of people meditate like at the beginning of the day or end of the day. I have to take more than that. Mm-hmm. Um, I have to realize that it's okay to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not like I, pull over and like just sort of like you know sit for hours um I am one of those people that need to be reminded frequently I also just need to I really want people to know too because it helped me is like you will be told by other people what works for them Mm -hmm. try it it will lead you to what works for you Mm -hmm. um I take moments literally I'll just like stop and just like breathe um my big thing is that when I get excited when I get pissed off, <laughs> when I get too emotional, I literally have to stop and be like, slow down. And I literally just pause. And I just say, slow down. Mm-hmm. You're doing okay. Like, I have to praise myself and not like a I'm full of myself way, but literally just like, I'm okay. Mm-hmm. It's going to be okay. Mm-hmm. And it's so little and so simple. People are like, that's not like a big enough thing. I was like, no, but it is Mm -hmm. because I spent all day telling myself I was horrible. So like, if I can just take moments throughout the day and just breathe, slow down, you're doing okay. Mm -hmm. Like, it's amazing what that does for me. Totally. And then once again, take what you want and leave the rest. But like, literally that has saved my life on many occasions. Mm -hmm. Like just slow down. Mm -hmm. Like you don't have to do that right now. You're good. Mm-hmm. Like just really organizing my breathing. Yeah, it's like it takes you out of whatever mindset you're in that is causing some uncomfortable experiences or feelings. Right. You know, you're like, okay, wait, I can just stop and actually step out of this. Yeah. Yep. That's awesome. And there's very few occasions where you can't. Mm-hmm. Like even at work, like I can literally like take a second mm-hmm. and I'm like half the time at a host desk in front of people. I will just literally take a moment and I'll be like, I'll call someone over and I'll be like, here, I need to go to the bathroom. And I'll just sit, I'll sit for just a few minutes, not even a few minutes, mm-hmm. even like 30 seconds. Mm-hmm. And it's been, it's okay. Mm-hmm. Because it will be. Mm-hmm. It's just in the moment, it doesn't feel like it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But moment, moments are measures of time that happen very fast and are many of. Mm-hmm. But that's what I do every day, every single day of my life. That's awesome. That's awesome because that too is like you can just like in in the moment change. So 
the process and the, you know, the group of people that I worked with over the last decade, that was what we called real time change, where it's like, Mm -hmm. you're feeling something that is overwhelming in a moment, and you just stop and you breathe, and you bring yourself Mm -hmm. here, you you get physical, you take a few breaths, Mm -hmm. and you Mm -hmm. like literally stop yourself from continuing to play out that behavior or that thought pattern or that whatever. That's real time change. That's, that's so cool. Mm -hmm. That's a great application. Yeah, Yeah. very practical. Okay, well, what an amazing conversation. And I'm like, I'm like, so patting myself on the back. So I'm like, I knew this was perfect. Because for some reason, I I couldn't think of a podcast. I've been wanting to have a podcast for years. And I just have never (laughs) done it. And like, in this last year, especially it was coming up. And I just didn't know what it was. Like, what did I want to have a podcast dedicated to? And then I started experiencing gratitude in my life. And I would have moments like you expressed where it was like, I felt this such appreciation and love for my life. And it was like me sitting on the toilet. Like, it was like the most meaningless moment. And I'm like, Mm -hmm. I feel so happy right now. And I'm like, this Mm -hmm. is like, I'm I'm falling in love with my life. And nothing Mm -hmm. is really changing except for me. Right. And so that's when it hit me. And I was like, for some reason, you were like, so clearly like, Nicole, like, she is that such an embodiment of like, first of all, like changing your life, radically changing your life, but ultimately living the life of your dreams and following your heart. And like, you deserve and have created everything you you deserve ultimately like you know like it's just amazing and so I was I was so excited that you were open to coming on here and sharing yourself and I meditate about that because I'm really bad at doing things <laughs> like that but no it's, it literally like in a meditation it was just like what's your problem mm-hmm. you're gonna be safe with somebody talking about something you talk about anyway yeah and something you believe in mm-hmm. and if my real goal in life is to be available or a beacon for other people to feel like there's hope if so, if one literally my whole life is just like if I help one person yeah same so like here we are let's yeah. see what happens yeah same I mean yeah, just don't, don't give up <laughs> yeah exactly well and for me if anything if it helps like I'm I'm encouraged and I'm inspired by your story and I'm like it just will allow me to continue what I'm doing, you know? And yeah, I'm totally the same way. I've, I've put myself online for the last decade and sharing my process on blogs and stuff. And it was always that point of like, if one person finds support for what I'm doing, it's all worth it. And I don't get a lot of views, you know, it's not like I have a ton of people following, but I'm like, there is someone watching and well, and if it helps you grow, exactly. And and like I said, when you talk out loud, Mm -hmm. a different energy is portrayed yeah and it's like literally just my biggest thing and my sponsor tells me all the time in general just like don't don't leave until the miracle happens Mm -hmm. because it's not gonna happen overnight I mean sometimes it does and that's pretty cool but like it doesn't really happen overnight just don't give up till the miracle happens and then you can make a decision to go back to hell if you want to have fun it's always gonna be there yeah will you be my sponsor in life (laughs) (laughs) I'll be your girlfriend. We just be girlfriends. I have girlfriends everywhere. Okay. I have a sisterhood of the traveling pants. Yes. That's awesome. <laughs> oh. you, yeah. You're just like a fountain of wisdom. Like you have all these like, I mean, I know AA does that. Like it, yeah. it is such an amazing program and community of people. Like I've had family, you know, in the program. So I grew up going to meetings and stuff like that. And it's just such an amazing community. And it, like it does have such like it works if but like anything like life it works if you work it so if you know right. it's what well, you put it's... in you get out exactly and it's so crazy because like i've never met an adult that doesn't need therapy yeah and the thing is that like whether you're comfortable or need aa or not let's not let's be honest there's groups for everybody yes um, and having like the big thing is like everyone has term like adults in general have terminal uniqueness mm-hmm Everyone thinks their problem is unique. Everyone Mm -hmm. thinks they have the biggest of that problem. And when you get in a group of people that has the same sort of angst about something, whether it be drugs, alcohol, weight, um, you know, like codependency, like anything, you will feel lighter Mm -hmm. because it's different. Mm. Like any program, any group of people, any group of humans, you can feel safe around. And honestly, in that case, you have to be vulnerable. Yeah. Um, and that's scary, mm-hmm. but 
I've never regretted a single second of it. Yeah. Same. Like anytime I've ever been vulnerable and opened myself up, I, I, I get comfort and support back every time. Mm -hmm. And it's taking Mm -hmm. that leap of faith of like knowing, even if I don't know it yet, I do know I'm not alone in this experience. I know that everybody has been through hell. I know it, Mm -hmm. you know? And so Mm -hmm. someone can relate to my story. Yes. And that's what connects us, you know, and that's Amen. How we... <laughs> okay, well, let's end it there. Thank you so much for being my first guest. I could have never had a more perfect first episode, so I'm so excited. So thank you so much, Nicole. Appreciate for... you. Thank you so much, Nicole, for being my first guest. I could not have had anyone better. And thank you so much for listening and joining us in on this conversation. If you found any support or this resonated in any way, please subscribe and follow along. If you'd like to share your biggest takeaway from this interview, I would love to hear it. For me, I think the biggest takeaway is don't be afraid to realize that you're not alone in your experience and everyone has been there and you have the ultimate choice to change directions and to change your life and you always have the opportunity to empower yourself. Thanks again for tuning in and I will see you next time.